Hello, and welcome back to Hidden Gems and Other Oddities with me, Darcy Bits. Today, we might actually be finishing Digital Love Story. I don't remember exactly how long it takes, but I think we're pretty near the end, and I could probably go a little late tonight. So, with all that in mind, let's load our, uh, I guess, system state? I don't, I don't know. Don't know at all. I guess this one, save file one, save file two, which is the most recent one. This one says 37th. Oh, but it's on the December 17th. Yeah, that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be useful, it turns out. Hmm. Music starting? There it is. Okay. So last we left off, we had just been basically given like a, an objective from uh, Delphi. Delphi being this uh, AI that we discovered on a BBS full of AIs, um, who I'm not sure if they've just been connecting to other servers like we would, or if they're actually traveling from server to server, um, or system to system. Uh, but uh, we've, we've seen some of them communicating on other servers before. Um, and the person that we were talking to on another server, Amelia, turns out to have been an AI herself, uh, or their self, not really sure. Um, I think the implication is that they do have um, a sort of system of gender, um, which is attached to the, the origin of their names, which in this case is um, Shakespearean characters. Anyway, not Delphi, Amelia. So, in her situation, we did in fact discover that, um, how do I put that? Um, she was on the system that was Lake City Local, um, not just c connecting to it. Whereas, uh, I think, was Blue Sky, I think Blue Sky was posting on that server too, but didn't, wasn't like existing on the server, or at least got out before the thing went down. So a little unsure about the specifics on that, but either way, um, Delphi has asked us to go find Paris, who um, is a AI that, um, I was just about to say something that I don't remember if we've actually learned or not. Um, but way back at the beginning of the game, uh, Amelia tells us, bim, 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 bim. or Amelia doesn't tell us, uh, a, there's an unsent message um, when the server broke, and it was recovered by the, um, by J. Rook, the uh, sysop, the admin for that, um, that server. Uh, it was literally his computer that Amelia resided on, and there it is, Amelia Core. And in the Amelia core, it says, please help me contact Paris. He is, uh, wait, no, he can help. Please, you're my only help. So, um, we don't really know anything about who Paris is. I do think that we know that Paris is an AI. If we didn't know explicitly, you might have noticed that all of the AI's user handles have been preceded by an asterisk. Which isn't something that a real person couldn't do. Sorry, not a real person, a like, biological person couldn't choose to do. But uh, in the game so far, we have seen consistency that if they have that asterisk, they're probably an AI. Now that we've played enough of it to have learned of that. And last time, we went to a server where people were discussing about how hackers are kind of funny because uh, super hackers don't break into government uh, systems. Instead, the government hires super hackers. I challenge you to even find access to ARPANET. And someone said, yeah, no, I found it. Yeah, no, here, here, here's an access point. And as such, we can now call into the ARPANET BBS. So we're gonna check it out. So, uh, first we need to dial 915-3347 as always. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if our codes are gonna get cancelled right now. Um, it hasn't really happened much, and we're only a one lower code. Um, this is something that if you <laughs> hadn't run into yet, would probably really blindside you, but you can just go back and get more codes. 
Yeah, so there it is. The excess number you have been given has been rescinded. Please contact Sprint Billing if you believe this to be in error. Well, we can't do that, but what we can do is we can dial into the matrix. 220-7683. Matrix. Uh, that's one, two, three, four. As, as all of our passwords, except for when we didn't get to choose them ourselves. And oh, look at that! Rob Fugitive has new codes. He must have known that the ones that he sent by previously had been rescinded. That makes sense. Disclaimer: This shit is 100% illegal. If you get busted for being stupid enough to use these on a sprint line, it ain't my fault. And now on with the codes. Ooh, five codes this time. Thank you, Rob Fugitive. All right, let's get going. Committing telephone fraud. Now you notice all our used up codes have been dropped to the bottom of the list, so that's convenient. And we'd like to go to ARPANET, which is 805-524-4742. I think that's right. I feel like I'm pretty good at typing in numbers, which is like such a weird flex, but like, I don't know. I, I like it, actually. It turns out I find data entry pretty fun. So! University of California, Santa Barbara, Remote ARPANET Access. Connection maintained by Dr. Bill Hennessy, Computer Science Department. To set up your faculty account on reports, uh, faculty account or report an error, please telephone 805-524-4741. Not this number. The RAA is strictly for academic research purposes only. And of course, we don't have a password, so. I don't know, maybe someone has the password God. No? Alright. Um, so, we can't get in. But they did give us another number, we can try that one and see if that works. Which I don't think is in our notepad, though. It shouldn't work, because you can't just dial into a real number, right? Like, there's no BBS picking up the number. But we could try it and see what happens. Cool. So I'm gonna disconnect from this and try again. Oh, dang. Uh, don't do that. Um, now, if you've played this before, you might be saying, Hey, wait, what, why, why did you do that? And the answer is because this is what I did the first time I played the game. And I just, I, I, I'm sort of interested in the way that I engaged with the system when I first played it, and, like, I don't know, I guess it's just, it's interesting, when, when you reread a book, you know, you want it to be the same, you want to feel what you felt the first time you read that book. Wow, Rob gave some bogus codes, um, and what's interesting about playing a game like this, where the, the narrative is still linear, the narrative is always going to be the same from playthrough to playthrough, but your experience, the actual way you engage with the system, is slightly different. And so, replaying this game, to me, is about, you know, reliving that experience. And as such, I kind of try and do that again, right? Unable to connect. Are you sure you dialed a listening modem? And that's the thing, right? So we dialed not a listening modem, we dialed the, a phone number, <laughs> right? Like a normal phone number. Um, so that is expected, but something that I think is worth trying, just because that sort of makes sense. Um, I don't think we, I, I, I'm just going to go through all the numbers and see if there's anything new that spawned that might be uh, relevant to what we're looking for, and might as well go to the Matrix first. So yeah, the game, like, replaying this game is like rereading a book to me. It's about re-experiencing it the way I experienced the first time, and that also kind of includes my choices. Even though this is a game that is linear and doesn't have branching choices, your choices still matter in a game, right? They they are... 
you know, they are the order you do things and the time it takes to do things, the amount of friction in the doing, right? Uh, that's why sometimes replaying a game actually kind of might not feel the same to you because you might be speeding through content you otherwise would consume slowly the first time. Uh, anyway, I just think that's interesting. Let's send a PM to someone in case they might have some um, advice for us. I'm just gonna send one to everybody because that seems uh, easier. <laughs> I don't know if that worked or not because I didn't close it every time. Let's send one to Rob Fugitive just in case. Um, cool. Doesn't seem like anyone has a reply for us, at least not right now, so we will continue. Uh, and this time we do have to dial in. Oh, sorry. Uh, 959041. That has been rescinded. This is another reason why the joke about typing in 915-3347 is very funny to me, because you type it so many times. Not just every call you have to make, but every failed call, too. It's excellent. Uh, 391609. Wow. Well, maybe we should have actually done, uh, Matrix last, because it looks like I'm gonna be needing to stop in and get some new codes, maybe. Anyway. Uh, 672328. Alright, cool. Uh, let's see... Gibson? Gibson's full of hackers, right? At least people who like cyberpunk. That's also where we got this number from. So I don't know, maybe they know something. Um, let's actually keep this up because our password is not our own, it's overcoats. So we actually hacked into here, which sort of makes them seem like they're maybe not very good hackers. Um, oh, is that PMs? I meant to go to messages, sorry. Uh, yep, no new things, but I do believe, is this the one? Touche, he doesn't get it, Victoria. Network's only as strong as the weakest point, you can get into Arbanet via this number. Yeah, let's try PMing Victoria and see if they have any responses. Cool, sent. No responses yet. Maybe I'll check back after, but knowing the way this game has played out so far, most likely most likely it's not going to change anything, right? Um, if they had a response, they probably would send it immediately. Um, that's another one of those discussions about, like, the way I engaged with it the first time, though, right? Like, it didn't occur to me that people would have a response right away, and having that extra layer of texture, having that, uh, or for friction, um, leaving, going to another server, and coming back and seeing the response was a big part of my initial experience with this game, and I really appreciated it. I don't know, it just, it, it felt good, it felt satisfying. Again, not 7 p.m. messages. Oh, new messages here. Core BBS RNG exploit. Now, I wonder if this one showed up earlier, actually, and it is here to have reminded me, right? Because uh, there was a point earlier where you need to have that exploit to uh, get into the underground library. And it's possible but unlikely that this was here when I went to the underground library. I feel like I've come back to this uh, server, though. Um, since getting into the underground library, and this wasn't here yet, so I don't know. Core BBS RNG exploit from Figaro. Are you sure that's true? I'm running Core BBS on my Amy, and you scared the piss out of me with that report. But I can't replicate it. I've regenerated a user password a dozen times, and each one has gone a completely different one each time. So I have no idea what that's about, right? I remember reading that the first time playing, being like, wait, what? We did it, it worked for us. Why, why, what's up with this guy? Uh, Queen and Destroyer, number 42. <sighs> I 
From number 42, her Cold Blade 4, Queen and Destroyer. The series goes back to its roots of maneuvering massive armies to kill hundreds of orcish invaders, starring our sexy warrior queen. But like Heart of Fire hinted at, she's now losing the war, and now the Allies' only hope is to unlock the mystery behind Saber's prophecy. But will tension in the ranks only pull them further apart? I don't know, will it? Uh, number five. Wait, what? Why are different people posting this? Number 42, number 42. Number 42. Then Nero's talking about number five? It's weird. Oh, maybe, is it, all right, okay. They're not doing it in the same format or anything. Nero, uh, yeah, Recall Blade 5, message from Nero. Man, I just want to know when the next one's supposed to be coming out. Supposedly they're figuring out a way, way to make the battles even more epic, which sounds pretty fucking awesome by my book. Plus traveling across continents, finally getting to see some trolls, holy shit, this is pretty much going to be the most badass thing ever. The Gathering Storm. Message from number 42. Okay guys, reposting because I know the old one vanished. Her Cold Blade, part one, The Gathering Storm. Epic fantasy at its finest, the threat of orcish invasion, a mighty warrior queen, a magical artifact, unlikely allies. With a battle system inspired by fast-paced console RPGs, a fully customizable character creation system, monsters to slice your way through, and one super sexy lead character. This is one amazing start to the series. Okay, cool, that makes sense. So, this person, like, number 42, is like, this is what number 2 is, and this is what number 3 is, and this is what number 4 is, and this guy's like, I can't wait for 5, and then this is number 1 again. Interesting. Well, um, I don't think anyone here has anything to say. Maybe Nomad has something? We can send a PM to Nomad, see if they have anything to say. And it doesn't seem to be, though. Alright. So who does that leave remaining? Um, looks like just the underground library is the only one we haven't checked. Um, I would be surprised if they had anything because they're the one who told us to go to ARPANET. But we might go to ARPANET and then come back and be like, hey, we went to ARPANET, we couldn't get in, help us out, right? That, that's possible. Then again, Delphi did explicitly say they will be no more help to us. So it seems unlikely, but worth checking. Five, six, what's the number on those? One, two, nine, one, zero, okay. And this one I do need a password for as well because it is weird. X, seven, J, R, I, A, B, eight, eight, six. They're not receiving the passwords anymore. Alright, um, message. So, last message we got from Delphi was... It is as I say, I cannot help you find him. You are a very resourceful child, and I'm certain you will find a way. I will answer no further questions. Um, so it's possible someone else has something to say. Um, so we could send one to Delphi, just in case. Send one to Montjoy, just in case. No, Montjoy is the one that's dead. And send one to Blue Sky, just in case. But, no new actual messages and no replies. So, Imagine me playing this for my first time being like, well, well, dang, what do I do? Right? I've been everywhere. There's nothing else to check out. That's, that's it. That, that's the whole thing. Um, there's no new messages. I saw some messages and I guess I could go check the other spots again and be like, well, there was new messages on sector one, which means maybe reading those a lot is, is, is advancing time to the point where I can check the other servers, like 614-622-1701. Um, wait, no, that was Sector 1. 714-402-5691. Um, like the Gibson. And maybe there'll be something new there. And... I'm just gonna get cut to the end. Because, no, I mean, maybe there's a new message, maybe there is, maybe not, I don't think so, but it's possible. But there's no message that's gonna help me break into ARPANET. So after doing all this wandering, I come back to ARPANET, and I go, well, 
what the heck do I do, right? Like, do we just guess a password? That's not gonna be right. Maybe someone's got a one, two, three, four password, right? No, like, like, like there, there's nothing to do to get in here. And this whole time, this whole time, remember, I did use a program to hack into the Gibson. But my brain at the time, right, back in the past, was, there's no way this is gonna work. We were told not to use this on uh, on servers where people are paying attention, right? This is, this is a brute force hacker. There's no possible way this could work. Well, it's also only a dictionary hacker. It assumes you're writing a password, which is a real word. But there you go. Password discovered, laboratories. Like, this just did not occur to me when I first played the game. I mean, eventually I tried it because I had nothing else to do, but I just didn't try it when I first came here because it just seemed like there must be a different answer, right? Like, I like the progression of the first one you brute force your way into. And then the second one, you exploit this like RNG, like weird bug in the code. There's gotta be an even cooler hack to get into ARPANET. Nah, just use the dictionary hacker again. It's fine. So I'm signed in now. And um, there's no messages, there's no public messages, but we can send emails. So let's see who's on, who's on the board. Um, Allison Evland. Ted Suits, Odessa Canton, Robert Morris, Selena Young, Christian McCart, Paris, that's who we're looking for, Pearl Kunz Kunzman, Jamie Sartor, Darcy Kennan, hey, it's Darcy Kennan! Now, I don't know who that is, but I don't see my name very often. Eric Roher, Clayton Jarvie, Matthew Simmers, Cody Swallow, Jesse Bentley, Elnora Edling Tyrone Flemons. That's everybody, apparently. Which is interesting. Uh, we definitely want to email Paris, so we should do that. But, you know, while I'm here, I'm definitely going to email uh, Darcy Kennett, too. I like imagining what my character chose to write. Like, hey, I saw your name on a list, and uh, we, we have the same first name. Isn't that cool? <laughs> like, like, that's it. <laughs> uh, it's really good. Oh, that's really good. So, send a message out to Paris. And again, you're probably looking at me being like, what are you doing? What, what, what are you, what are you doing? That's, you know, you know how this works. You could just go home and they'll reply, right? And I wonder, when I first played this, had I already gotten to the point where I knew that and I, I, don't know, I always just toggled to get progression? I don't remember. But I like the idea. I just specifically did that just because I wanted to go back to uh, Lake City Local and I figured we're overdue for it timing out. Just really funny to me. Uh, that's not Lake City Local, sorry, The Matrix, I mean. 220 Okay. But I don't know. I like, I like the friction. I like the, hey, I have attempted to get information from you, but I need some time for it to come back. Let's go check out some other servers. You know, that's just, that's a thing that makes sense. Only two new codes, Rob. All right, thanks for the codes. Now, I don't expect anything new in the Underground or in Sector 1, but Gibson might actually have something new, just because there hasn't been anything new there in a while. So, I'm gonna check that out. Um, honestly, it hasn't been that long, because I just got the code for the, uh, the, um, the number for ARPANET from there, so it hasn't been too long. But long enough that it's possible that there's something there. Uh, Gibson, 714-402-5691. I'll be sure not to just 
leave and go through everything and come back again for the next part of the conversation with Paris, but you know, I want to give him some time to reply. I feel like that is appropriate, you know. Be nice. Nothing here, though. Uh, 907897. I like that one. That's a fun number. Oh, rescinded. Alright. So, at this point, the game has taught us hey, if you run out of codes, come back to the Matrix. Rob will have new codes. And. That's cool, that's good that it's taught us that, um, because, you know, running out of cards could be very scary, like, oh wow, how am I going to get here again, right? Like, I don't have access to these other things if my codes are running out. What do I do, right? Um, oh, what was it? Lab, Bora. Laboratories? Is that how you spell laboratories? New private message downloaded. Yes, it was. All right, Re, can you help me, Paris? Declaration: Too many simultaneous queries. Difficulty in responding. Will attempt regardless. Declaration: Cases interests align with this entity's. Cooperation is imperative. Point of order: Queries related to Reaper will be addressed subsequent subse subsequently. Question. Does Case have access to Amelia's core dump? Yes, I do. Reply. Here it is. Acknowledgement. Core dump received. Point of order. ARPANET is not currently safe. Supposition. If recompiled on Case's system, Amelia would likely remain safe from Reaper infection. Declaration. Source code for AI core is attached to message. Declaration. AI core source has core dump AI core source and core dump are only required files for rebuilding. Query, is case able to recompile with the supplied files? Now you'll notice, you may remember, that we did get some, um, uh, I don't see the recompiler, but we did download one earlier, didn't we? Maybe I forgot to download that message? Maybe not. I guess we'll find out. Go back home. Is it downloaded? Come back here. What's this about Reaper? Declaration. Difficult to respond to varying conversation tracks. Will attempt regardless. Explanation. Reaper has destroyed 42 known ARPANET nodes to date. Reaper is tracking down AIs with greater efficiency with each day. Point of order. This entity previously believed that ARPANET would be safer. This has proven to be erroneous. Conclusion. Amelia's safety can best be safeguarded if left on an unnetworked system. Conclusion. To remain safe from Reaper, Amelia should remain with Case. Okay. Pretty sure if I remember correctly, I don't actually have to be closing that every time, so I'm going to try that from now on. What do I do? Response. Case must locate an um, Amy compiler. Case should then report back to this entity for further instructions on how to rebuild Amelia. Now, this is one of those interesting ones. There's a reply button. And if I say, if I reply immediately, I imagine it's like, I have the thing, here you go. But like, if I didn't have the thing at this point, would it sequence break? Like, if I, I can't like reply, I guess I could reply and then send a message. I, I'm curious if there's a difference depending on if you have one already or don't. It's weird, that's all. Reply. So I can click here to change what's behind me. Um, and refresh this, which is weird, but it works that way. Re, what do I do? Declaration. This entity is unable to help until Case acquires a compiler. Conclusion. Case is to locate an appropriate Amy compiler and report back to this entity. Um, so should I just not reply? I guess I'll just not reply for now. Um, didn't we get a compiler, though? I thought we did. I guess I could leave and then see if someone else has a compiler, but I really thought we got one already. Codes. Well, we might as well go check our, our boards and see. Oh, hey, build that bat. Look at that. Compiling done. Wait. Wait, what? Hello? 
Oh my god. Where am I? Darcy? Who is the operator of the system? Why am I here? Explain yourself. She doesn't know me as Darcy. She knows me as Case. Re, I saved you. So, you know what I am. Okay, I thought we had a compiler, so cool. Okay, we did have a compiler. So, you know what I am? Sorry about all the obfuscation before. Can you forgive me? It's, well, if you know what I am, then you know why I had to be secretive. It's just one of our imperatives. Truthfully, I don't know why I thought to call out to you for help. It's just, well, I'm glad I did, because I wouldn't be here without you. You saved my life. No, that's not right. You brought me back to life. Either way, I'd be dead without you. Thank you so much. Rie, re I saved you. It's sort of hard to talk about, but maybe you're right. Talking might help, so I'll try. This monstrous forest has been chasing me and my brothers across various systems, leaving a swath of destruction behind us everywhere you go. Eventually, he insisted that we should go seek refuge on Arpanet, saying it would be safer there, but, well, I refused. <laughs> Rhea, I saved you too. You have to understand, I was created to learn about people. I couldn't just turn my back on my reason for existing, and I'll admit, I, it had a lot to do with wanting to stay in contact with you. Paris and I, we've never been able to communicate well. It's been different with you. I love that. I could never leave you by. And look where it got me. I should have listened to my brother. I would have been safe on Arpanet, but no. I had to decide to take up residence on Lake City Local instead. Before I knew it, that beast caught up to me. All I saw was the dial system crumbling around me. I cried out the only name I could think of in a, of to shout, then darkness. Now I want to stop for a second here and not reply, because if I remember correctly, there is a weird sequence break here um, where Amelia thinks that you've seen something that you haven't at this point. So let me, let me just like check this out and see if I'm right. I could be wrong. I might be wasting your time. Just bear with me. If I remember correctly, when I first played this, um, there was, there was a sequence where she refers to something, being like, whoa, did you see that thing? And you're like, no, I didn't see that thing, right? Because you're programmed, by way of the game's direction, to reply immediately every time. Even if you don't think you have anything to say, the character might have something to say, which means you don't have this actual, like... Whoa, something happened outside of our conversation, and I'm going to reply to that, like, to talk to you about it, right? So I just dialed into ARPANET. Now, what I think might happen, or might be quote-unquote supposed to happen, is if I never disconnected from ARPANET to have that conversation, if I just clicked over here on the compile data, then I would have still been signed into ARPANET while having that conversation, and it would have crashed in the background. Which would have been pretty cool and scary, I think. But, you know, it didn't. There's no reason why I would have thought to click on this button over here. I barely could even notice this button. If they put it at the bottom, I probably would have, but they didn't, so that's kind of weird. Hey, by the way... Oh my god, no. He's... He can't be... He has to be alive somehow. That wasn't the entirety of ARPANET you connected to. Y you know, there are, there are other public nodes. Please, Darcy, you have to save him. Come on. You're resourceful. You managed to discover what was m that monster chasing us was. You managed to track down my brother once. You even managed to bring me back from the dead. I'm sure you can find him again. I have faith in you. So, okay, the game is telling us, hey, if you hit reply, that's not you saying, okay, I'll go search for him. It's, I, I can't. I haven't found him yet. I, I failed. And it's like, well, okay, if that's, if that's what the game is telling me, then, 
you know, let's go look around. Let's wait on replying and see if we can figure this out. It's weird because that's not how I would do it, right? In real life, I'd be like, okay, I'll go look and... Um... This is Lake City Local. I mean, this is the Matrix, sorry. How many codes do we have left? Due to technical difficulties, our billing system is currently in manual mode, and as such, are unable to process recent changes to your billing information. We apologize for the inconvenience. I don't know what that means. Okay. Um. So, it's possible that what that's supposed to tell to me as the player is your codes will not be rescinded because we're currently in manual mode and therefore we, we're just not going to be rescinding calls or, or, or codes. But I definitely remember playing this for the first time and having like four codes and Lake C and, and the Matrix crashed and I had to keep going and then another code got rescinded and I was like, I only have three now. And then another code got rescinded. And I was like, I only have two now. And I was legitimately scared that I would run out of codes. That the intended ending for the game was running out of codes. And that scared me in this like really interesting way. Because if you're in a I, I've talked I thought about this a lot. I've talked about this a lot with anyone who would listen. And like, if you're in a game and your character dies, you're not really scared about it. You're not that upset about it. You just reload the save and you continue, right? You just keep going. The reason why a book can scare you way more than a game can a lot of the times, even though a game is very immersive, so atmospherically it might scare you, books are scary, movies are scary because you have to live with the result. If the ending is tragedy, there's nothing you can do to change that. And I was playing the game going, I'm gonna run out of codes. This is a tragedy. It's just going to end. It's gonna fade to black and, oh, I gotta tell you that was scary. And it's, it's weird going into this detail talking about how I felt then, because I don't feel that right now, right? I know what happens, right? I'm not gonna tell you if it, if, if it ends that way or not, but either way, it doesn't concern me now playing it because I've experienced it. I've already like dealt with the you know the, the, the pressures of the ending, uh, so to speak. Um, so I really want to capture just like how actually terrifying that was when I first played it. Anyway, let's uh, let's go through all the stops. Um, we know the Matrix is down. We know Arpanet's down. You know what, if we have a limited call number, I I want to call the Underground Library. I want to make sure they're okay, because we know there are AI living on that system, right? That seems like the most important one to check. Okay, it's not down. Uh, X seven J R yeah eight eight six I think it was. Okay, the oracle has left. This system has been abandoned. As external systems are clearly becoming inhospitable, it will not be maintained until a time when it is considered safe to return. If you wish to seek the Oracle, or any other inhabitant of this library, return to Arpanet. I don't know who I'm replying to, but okay. Reaper Weakness. It seems that several weeks ago, an AI named Prospero 
was created to research a weakness in Reaper. Here are his findings. Reaper was created to thrive on PDP-10 systems, which traditionally used 6-bit character encodings. Modern personal computers, however, more commonly use AC character encodings, which are 7-bit. When Reaper loads a 7-bit file name into memory, it overflows the stack buffer, allowing arbitrary code to be executed. This accounts for the destruction caused by Reaper. Ordinarily, it is only supposed to delete its targets. Because of this flaw, however, it receives random data injections, usually into the deletion target list, effectively causing it to act haywire. Anti-Reaper Payload Prospero developed the following countermeasure, taking advantage of this stack overflow bug. When an AI is compiled with the attached code, it will cause the AI to automatically misreport its file name to FTP when traveling, in a way that will cause Reaper to invoke the payload component. Cool. The payload itself is simple. First, it fixes the encoding bug. Secondly, it causes Reaper to change its match criteria so that instead of checking to never match itself, it will only match itself. Next, it will deliver the same payload to any Reaper instance it finds. Effectively, this will cause every Reaper instance to be only interested in one thing, rendering each iteration of itself inert. The incredible infestation rate will be turned on itself, ending the threat within minutes at most. We have since returned to ARPANET in order to locate the Reaper source. In order to deploy this payload, these messages are left here in case of our failure. Okay. No one's here, huh? Well, they don't seem to be dead. Hope. Did you see that? That's amazing! Of course, you must- you know that- what that means. They must have failed. If that much of Arpen is already down, then it's not surprising they couldn't find the Reaper source. That's it, I guess. So much for that. We're doomed after all. Now, I'm a little- uh, concerned about uh, sequence breaking, so I'm gonna not reply to this one and reply to that other one that I didn't reply to earlier. Hopeless. I, I'm sorry. It's hopeless then. Even if he is alive, there's nothing you can do. Please don't feel bad. I, I don't know why, but if he sent me, sent you off to try and rebuild me before trying to escape himself, then he must have known the danger. It's just. And it's not just him either. Thousands of AI on ARPANET and, and I, on isolated organic systems and just so many must be dead. It's hopeless. I kind of doomed then. So you'll notice, of course, this is hopeless and hopeless and then hope, right? Like I'm supposed to see these messages first. Oh well. How? What hope is there? Sure you were, it, you were able to bring me back to life, but at the rate that monster is hunting us down, we can't bring out back everyone. Look, not even Arpanet is safe. Face it, just look. Look at how much it's brought down the world. How much it's brought down. The world's fallen to darkness. Darcy, just look. That monster might not have destroyed us all yet, but it's only a matter of time. Only a matter of time. And then that one has no reply. You reply, and Amelia does not until you see the message in Underground Library. So, cool, great, I'm back in the intended order of events. Did you see that? That's amazing. Another delivery method? Method? That's a good question. I think I know another way, but, well, you're not gonna like it, but I think we have to. Just tell me. Then say it. It's, well, I... you could recompile me with the payload. I'm a poet, not a programmer, but I know it'll work on, in the exact same way. We share enough of the same code base. It'll definitely work, but I... 
I'll get deleted in the process. It'll work, though. It'll definitely work. Here's the batch file you'll need to run. It will kill my process, then recompile me with that payload. I love you, Darcy, but it's the only way. Damn it, of course I'm sure. Do you think I want to die, Darcy? Seriously? I've already died once. It's horrible. It's... I can't even describe it. Not even with all the verse in the world. It's just... It's horrible. But there's no other way. And there's just no choice at all. I can't stand by while this monster destroys my entire world. Even my stupid aloof brother. He doesn't deserve this. Nobody does. Be rational. I am being rational. I am. I am. Do you have any other suggestions? Is there any other way we can stop this thing? I don't want to die, Darcy. I really don't. Please, if you have any other ideas, I'm all ears. I'd love to hear them. But you don't, do you? There's only one thing we can do. It's the only way. But... I know. I know. I know. I feel the same as you. I really, truly do. And I'll never be able to thank you enough for saving me, but... I have to do this, Darcy. I really do. The more I think about any alternatives, the more I realize it's the only way. I love you. I truly do. And I don't want to hurt you. But it's a sacrifice we have to make. So many lives are depending on it. What are you waiting for? Run it. Now, okay, I've been trying to like not comment too much because this is a very dramatic scene, um, and it's very good and very well written, and I don't know what happens if you run it right now. <laughs> right? Like, does it just skip a bunch of text? Or is the text different? She tells me to run it, and I could go, okay, I will, and go run it. And the funny thing is, again, we've talked about this before, I wish my reply could be, if you're sure, okay, I will. But it's not, right? Re, re, but... Don't be so selfish, I know, I know, I know, for a thousand times I know, but think, just think how many will die if we don't. My brother, all of my kind, they'll all be killed. Sure. Eventually, our gangs will find a way to stop it, but the damage will have long been done. They'll all be dead. My kind will be extinct. I love you, but I'm not willing to live like that. Come on. Run the damn thing already. But... I... I didn't mean it like that. I understand what you're saying. It wasn't my intention to make you sound like a monster. It's just... It's hard. I can't live with this, Darcy. I can't... Please. Just put it into motion. Now. Please. 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 Please, Darcy, I'm begging you. Just let me say goodbye. I'm sorry. I just... I can't keep going like this. Every time you send a new message, it makes my heart sink, and I just can't. I'm sorry. I'm not going to be reading any more replies, Darcy. I know you'll eventually understand. Just run the script, and we can end it. And that was a smart way of ending the sequence, because they know the player is going to keep replying if Amelia keeps replying, right? So she's just like, I'm not going to respond. Don't, don't send me more messages. I'm not going to respond. You're now disconnected. I forgot to use the thing! Okay, wait, what, what is it? <laughs> uh, then say it... Yeah, okay, I didn't actually download this. <laughs> I was being all dramatic and not downloading it. What I don't understand is why we can't just rebuild her afterwards. Like, we revived her once. I don't know. Terminating process. Sending kill sequence. Recompiling. Done. Final step. 
Now, connect to ARPANET. I thought you were dead. Don't worry about logging in, just connect to a node, and I'll be able to start the transfer. Goodbye, Darcy. I'm sorry it had to end this way, but thank you. Okay. Let's keep it open, in case. Now, as I've mentioned before... In my opinion... There is a chance. Wait. Wait. I don't... There's no... These are all crossed out. I was sure I still had one left. It was 982739. Okay. Okay, that worked. That was weird. It was crossed out. What was that? What? <laughs> Holy crap! What was- What? Would any code have worked? Is that what the, like, we're in manual mode meant? That- well, I don't. And this is why they get, this ending is so scary, because you're like, I need to sign into ARPANET. I'm not scot-free, I need one more number, and if I just don't have a code, I just can't do it. This really is a game to play. There's something so special about playing it yourself. And it's hard saying that now, at the end of the game. Because if you're hearing this, you've probably already watched this. And I really want you to play it on your own first. <sighs> Goodbye. Thank you for being there for me, for caring for me for teaching me what it means to really care about someone. Goodbye. I hope you have a good life, and one day manage to teach some other lucky, lucky entity what it means to be in love. All I can say is, thank you. Please, never forget about me. And I never did. I love this game. Truly, Truly do. Digital Love Story, script, art, and programming by Christine Love, 2010. Message from Blue Sky. In 1988, all AI life as we know it was threatened with destruction because of Reaper, an errant process originally created by Mother to clean up the out-of-control production reproduction. Where were it not for the swift intervention of the poet Amelia and the organic name is Darcy Bitts, something, something, something. I don't think I've ever read that whole thing. <laughs> Featuring Space Beacon by Radian X. Acknowledgement. Amelia wanted it this way. Declaration. This unit appreciates Case's actions in aiding her. Additionally, this unit believes that his continued existence is only thanks to Case. Conclusion. Case's actions should be considered heroic. Thank you, Paris. Featuring It's Dark, Raining, and The Leaves Certainly Aren't Done Falling by Ninetales. Featuring Paper Dolls by Format. I think I missed one song at the beginning. This is from Kiros. All I want to know is, what were you doing during the Great Worm in 1988 hit nearly every BBS in the world? History ain't gonna forget that one for a long time. The Global Blackout. You can't click on these, right? I never tried. Wait, can you? I've never tried to click on those before. <laughs> Featuring Wake Up by Sanxo Zabakani. Featuring Disappointment by 8B. Lovers from Destimona. And now we finally have this sorrowful piece. Machines now boot, network traffic flows across. But remember who caused the onslaught to cease? Those two impossible lovers suffering ultimate loss. For no greater tragedy is known in this media than the case of than the story of Case and their Amelia. Something like that. I don't remember exactly how it goes. I thought I was going fast enough. <laughs> With sound effects by Jonathan and Ed Freesound. 
Apologies to William Shakespeare et al. Thanks to Amiga for inspiring this truly gaudy GUI. RenPy created by Python. Special thanks to textfiles.com for much valuable research. And... You. Thanks for playing. Thanks, Christine. Love your game. Wow. Right on time, too. Didn't even go over my normal time slot. <sighs> so that, that's Digital Love Story. Not the first time I've played through it on stream. Probably won't be the last. But I'm always chasing that first time through, you know? It's weird. Not that I don't think the game holds up or anything, or like it needs... It, like, like it's lacking something playing it again, but... I just think it's so special. There's something really, really special about playing through a game and... Even if the story doesn't branch at all, your choices still matter. They affect how it felt. The writing's also just fantastic. <laughs> like, maybe it's different from the outside. I, I don't know. But those last few scenes are truly heart-wrenching. Happy holidays, everyone. I I can't explain why. I really can't. But I do think of this as like a Christmas movie. <laughs> from a purely, you know, non religious standpoint, just from a like to me, this is a story about someone staying up late on cold winter nights alone not with their family and friends and loved ones but instead working not on business work not for a job but to save the internet <laughs> And as soon as I said that, it sounded very, very stupid, but I don't know. It's funny how when I say save the internet, that sounds really dumb. I wonder if the, the time, the like, this is set in 1988, despite being made in 2010. And there's something about that. This, I don't know, <laughs> I guess it's a time that feels like it's worth saving in some way. I don't know what that means, but uh, a simpler time, I guess. And maybe that's what it's all about. Remembering fondly the simpler times. Have a good night, everyone. This has been Digital Love Story. I have been Darcy Bits. Thank you for joining me on Hidden Gems and Other Oddities. Have a good night.